When Mortal Kombat debuted in 1995, there were a handful of, let's say, creative choices that deviated from the source material. For starters, the traditionally Chinese Sub-Zero was played by a Frenchman, and oh god, what did they do to our boy Reptile? Oh, jeez. Design problems only tripled when its sequel was released, giving us the likes of whatever this thing is. Thankfully, the upcoming reboot seems to have a phenomenal budget and production team behind it. That being said, we can't help but fear that there are going to be some misses. After all, it is a movie based on a video game. There's a lot riding on Liu Kang in this movie, which is why we are ecstatic at how well he is being pulled off by Ludi Lin. In the games, we see the evolution of Liu as he transforms from a young orphan trained by Shaolin monks to become a literal fire god. Having been playable in all but one Mortal Kombat game, he's a staple and his moveset is known around the world. I mean, the only people that don't like his spinning bicycle kicks are the ones on the receiving end of them. We see many of his traits are being carried into the film, from his fire powers to his crazy dragon form animality. He's a staple of the series and we are certainly glad that his adaptation is going to be faithful from his appearance to his combos. Ed Boon and the team over at NetherRealm Studios were deep in the pit when Melina was not on the base roster of Mortal Kombat 11. The Melina stands made it known over every social media platform with hashtag Melina for MK11 trending until she finally entered the tournament through Combat Pack 2. The character is one that the fans cherish very loudly, so of course, the Molina community got a little peeved when her movie adaptation veered off the source material in the trailer. Gone is her traditional purple costume and, much more importantly, her hideous to carton teeth. In the games, Shao Kahn tries creating a clone as a backup for his daughter Katana, who he stole from the king after murdering him in cold blood. Look, it's a weird, weird franchise. He used a member of Baraka's species as the base and thus formed the evil Melina. The hideous teeth serve as a reminder for her gruesome inception, showcasing the fact that she's the product of a horrifying origin. The teeth on the unmasked Melina we've seen so far, sure they look bad, but nothing Nothing an orthodontist couldn't fix in uh, three or four years. Of course, this could just be a partial look at the character, and maybe by the end of the film, we see Melina in all her chomping glory. But as it stands right now, her character design is not terribly true to the game. Okay, we are totally resisting the urge to pull an Arnie and repeatedly make some ice puns, but we are going to be nice and avoid that, because because ice in and then ice and I'm, I, I, I pronounce the ice super anyway the first iteration of Mortal Kombat featured Bihan in the Sub-Zero mantle Bihan is every bit despicable as he is brutal and we are thrilled that the film's iteration handles the character so well in the few clips we've seen of him so far he's retconned as the reason why Jax gets his Boston dynamics like robot arms which is a great way to demonstrate just how menacing the character is right off the bat we also love that moment where he takes his true name quite literally as he summons a cold wall for Scorpion in one of his trademarked fatalities. I am Sub Zero. The Bihan interpretation of Subby also works best narratively. After all, he's the one who murders Scorpion, which sets up a whole feud that could play out in these films. Even more exciting than seeing Sub-Zero and Scorpion duke it out once again is the prospect that Bihan's alter ego will come into play. Noob Saibot is the alias Bihan takes on after his death at the hands of Scorpion, and that storyline introduces many fan-favorite plot threads like Quan Chi and his Brotherhood of Shadow. Palette swap Sub-Zero and you get the green meanie, Reptile. While he has transformed over the years from a humanoid ninja in green to a reptile that could fit in with the likes of Killer Croc and the Lizard, we've never seen him get as reptilian as featured in the trailer, which has fans a little worried. Some of his signature moves, like his slippery slide and claw pounce, are designed with the character's slim aesthetic in mind. It would be a shame if he got nerfed as a result of being a one-off. While there should be some stakes in the film and favorites need to be killed off to show how brutal and X-rated the journey is, reptile mains everywhere are feeling the disrespect, especially after his character was downplayed to but a quick jump scare in the Mortal Kombat 11 crypts. 
You know what, even looking like he does in the trailer, he still looks better than his CGI counterpart in the 1995 film. Yeesh. We still aren't done with the ninjas just yet. Of course, we have to talk about everyone's favorite scorpion. No matter how many times we hear the quote, a good get over here sends chills down our spine. Get over here. A quick trip over to the low level ranked on MK11 and you see two things, his hellport and his spear, both being attacks we see in the trailer indicating we will see scorpion in all his Shirai Ryu glory. Sometimes changes that aren't entirely true to the games are still appreciated. For instance, Scorpion's new costume is, uh, it's pretty wicked. The samurai touch adds history while still evoking his recognizability. And speaking of history in the costume, the kunai design is also a nice touch. While it's certainly efficient at delivering devastating blows, it actually has its origins from 14th century Japan, where it originated as, get this, a gardening tool, going from farming crops to farming souls. Not a bad journey. It's so easy to hate Kano, and that's why we all love him. That being said, his interpretation may end up being not so much like his arcade counterpart. In the games, Kano is about as deviant as they come. He's gone undercover with Sonya and Jax, completely betraying them to scrub Black Dragon records. As Kano gives his clan a leg up, Jax takes his eye out, setting the stage for an epic rivalry. The hatred between the special forces and the black dragons are integral to lore, and the fight between Jax and Kano was used to solidify that. Have no fear about Kano staying as a good guy though, Kano is shown firing his eye optic laser at Kung Lao, so his turn to evil will be touched upon in the film. Fans have also pointed out that when Kano fires his laser, he is doing so without a protruding eye shield, switching out the trademarked Phantom of the Opera-esque design to the character. But we've got to remember, this is the dude who coined the term Kano Ball, none of this is meant to be taken that seriously. Goro is one of the most infuriating bosses from all of our childhoods. A quick sight of him typically evokes a dreadful remembrance of the quarters wasted trying to surpass him on the towers. When we saw Goro in the original film adaptation, we couldn't help but laugh at how clunky the puppeteering was. Disgusting. Now we do love practical effects, and more often than not, they are the better choice. But that Goro just ended up being a little too clunky, removing his menace and adding in a goofy aspect that devalued how intimidating the Prince of Shokan truly is. Thankfully, this CGI looks leagues better than other grotesque CGI monsters. We're looking at you, Scorpion King. When looking at the cast list for the upcoming film, there is one combatant that seems to be 100% unlike any video game counterpart, that being Cole Young. The problem that comes with the inclusion of Cole is it brings down the importance of other combatants. But time will tell. Maybe Cole quickly becomes a fan favorite and is swiftly added into Combat Pack 3. Or maybe he turns out to be a name-swapped character. With Cole's connection to the ninja and mysterious Mortal Kombat Scar, it could be speculated that Cole is actually Kuai Lang, the younger brother to Bi Han. Regardless of who he might be, if he actually is supposed to be anyone, we've got to give it to him. He's already a better character than Jarek. Where do you get these guys? Sonya Blade is often the unsung hero of the Mortal Kombat franchise. Sure, we love the series aspect of ninja inflicting permanent lung damage on one another, but also as important to that in the current timeline has been the Special Forces side stories. Sonya Blade, mother of Cassie Cage. Sonya is a multifaceted character in the games, being both a badass soldier and lovely parent to Cassie Cage. Family was an extremely important plot thread in the last two games, and if Sonya wasn't adapted well, we would never want to see those potential storylines play out on the big screen. Of course, we gotta mention Johnny Cage's seeming exclusion from the film. Johnny brings an overdose of meta, a sharp wit, and hilarious satire on A-list celebrities and wrestlers. Not to mention his Mediterranean god backstory lends itself well to some pretty awesome shadow attacks. His boisterous personality and flair in choreography will be sorely missed in this go-round of the tournament. Of course, if the film does end up getting a sequel, Johnny is definitely at the top of our most wanted list. With Johnny not being in the forefront of this adaptation, there is the possibility there could be some references scattered around the Earth realm in this film of some advertising he's done, setting up his inevitable introduction. 
Now we need to take an oath to collectively stop fan casting Keanu Reeves in any given movie, but right before that we need to make sure he's cast as Kenshi in this film's sequel. His look was designed after Neo's final outfit in Matrix Revolutions and with the good relationship between Keanu and Warner Brothers, it only makes sense.